Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's event. Uh, we are very excited for this opportunity uh, to talk to you all, and we appreciate everyone for tuning in, and we appreciate uh, the Latin American Association uh, for inviting us all to be a, a part of this. So today we're here to talk about workforce development and what opportunities there are for uh, our, our students and young adults in this changing work environment. You know, as technology changes, uh, we dealt with the pandemic and we wanna make sure we equip the, our, um, our young folks uh, with the skills, the knowledge and training to be successful uh, moving forward. Um, so with that being said, Today, I am joined by uh, a group of esteemed professionals uh, from different backgrounds uh, who will share their insight to really help uh, our young folks, those of you uh, listening with the information to really help you find the resources and opportunities, some you may be aware of and some you may not. So uh, with that being said, we're gonna talk about workforce skills we're going to talk about how and where to obtain those skills. And we're going to talk about opportunities for high schoolers and young adults, as I mentioned earlier. So with me today, uh, we have Mr. Jason Strickland of the Technical College System of Georgia, TCSG. Um, basically, they oversee the state's technical colleges, adult literacy, and a host of economic and workforce development programs. So welcome, Jason. Uh, we you, also Chuck. have... Thank you. Uh, we also have Phil Oleyi from Next Generation. Um, they are an Atlanta youth uh, organization and they help young people uh, with pathways and get exposure to professional and work environments with a personalized support in the, in the form of teachers and college mentors, right, in our fine city of Atlanta. So welcome, Phil. Thanks, Chuck. Sure. And we have Melvin Everson. He is the VP of Economic Development at Gwinnett Technical College, part of the Technical College System of Georgia. And he will be talking to us a little bit about what he does in his role and how that will benefit you all as well. So let's get started. We just have a few questions um, we'll share uh, with you all. And at the end, maybe if there's any questions that they get back, we'll, we'll allow you guys time to address those. So we're going to start with a very uh, important question for Phil. Uh, what do you think is the lasting impact of the pandemic on labor demand, especially for young people that are starting careers or planning to start careers? Yeah, it, it feels eerily similar to the Great Recession back in 08 and 09. Right. And young people, uh, and particularly the particularly those job seekers who are uh, high school aged and college uh, aged or recent graduates, really feeling the, the brunt of uh, that tightening in the labor market. Just less job opportunities out there uh, are younger folks and a lot of my students. Uh, the sectors and spaces that they work in have been disproportionately impacted. You, you talk about hospitality, leisure, uh, retail spaces. Mm -hmm. Uh, many working students, and so that has a direct impact on their ability to persist along their post-secondary paths, be it a two-year technical vocational path or a four-year college and university path, uh, which has a direct impact on uh, credentialing, uh, uh, real technical uh, skills development and expertise building, uh, the ability to, to hold. Uh, it's difficult to even get a job, but to keep a job in this labor market, uh, those gaps in spaces make it that much more difficult uh, to get another job. If you're out there looking in the job market, um, uh, wealth building for our black and brown youth um, compared to, to white, more affluent uh, uh, um, folks in the workforce. And then mental wellness. Uh, it's been one of the top issues that uh, my team and, and I have been dealing with our students just being disconnected from a routine, being disconnected um, from work that uh, has aligned with interests and passions. And now to be separated from that um, has taken its toll from a social and emotional standpoint. Right, and I can understand that uh, particularly 
at a school that's predominantly minority, we've understood the impact that it's had on, on our enrollment. Um, and I'm sure throughout the state, a lot of us are, are experiencing that. So thank you for that. Um, we're going to move on to the, the next question. Uh, this one is for Jason. What is the mix of occupations and the new workforce skills that are going to be required or most needed moving forward? Yeah, so in Georgia, we are very fortunate that we have what is called the, the Governor's High Demand Careers Initiative, which has a, a list of occupations in a wide variety of fields. I'm actually going to paste the link into the chat so that if any of the participants want to look at it later, they can. But in Georgia, there's a strong need for technical careers. So technical careers being automotive, aviation, manufacturing, construction, and welding and joining. We have lots of opportunity in those. And one of the things I like to encourage people to think about, too, is that those occupations have changed in, in, in big ways, particularly in the automotive industry, where we might think that students are working in like a, a dirty garage. If you visit any automotive shop today, they are on computers and they're clean and it's just a, a, a night and day difference depending, you know, compared to what it was in the past. And, there, and the, the mechanics career field is more than just, you know, cars and trucks, right? It's also all the heavy and diesel equipment that's used on construction sites, big opportunities in that area as well. The other thing in Georgia that is really huge uh, right now is our cyber careers. So uh, um, cyber security is huge. We've all just had the pipeline um, disaster that may do you know, trouble with gas and all of that. Well, Georgia has an extreme need for professionals in cybersecurity, and students can start training for these programs through our dual enrollment initiatives um, while they're in high school. We also just launched a new initiative with Amazon Web Services, where we're going to try to train 5,000 students um, with the department with the Department of Education. So there'll be high school opportunities as well for cloud computing skills in Georgia. There's a huge need for cloud computing skills. And I'm really proud to say that Amazon has come to the table with lots of resources for that program. And they are getting a group of employers together. And our hope is to be able to have people with guaranteed interviews once they finish that program. So there are several colleges around the state, including Gwinnett Technical College, that are participating in that initiative. So it's, it's nice to see all of that going on. And then the other big area where I get calls every day is in the construction field. And those are on the high demand careers initiative as well. And, and not just the person that is doing the actual labor, right? We need the estimators and the project managers and the four persons and the electrical contractors that, that manage the whole construction industry. So it's a career that you could start out in, you know, maybe learning the basic trade, but you have a, a really a, a huge path to career and wealth building in construction and moving up in that field. And it's a field particularly that women do really well in as well. I think oftentimes they don't think of that maybe as a traditional female career field, but there are lots of opportunities there. And I think it's just something that students should explore. So we have that list on Georgia Futures. You can also go to tcsg.edu, the, the state website, and get a list of all the technical colleges and you can find the colleges that are offering these high demand career programs. The high demand career initiative provides an extra $500 for tuition, which effectively makes these programs basically tuition free to students around the state. So I think it's a great place to start. And the really thing that, I, that I'd like to say about technical education is that it's the cheapest education you'll ever get, but it also is the path to a high paying job and it won't leave you saddled with lots and lots of student loan debt to pay off later. It's a quick career path that will make you immediately employable and you'll start earning wages. And many of our students get employed while they're still in our programs. All right. Well, thank you, Jason. I think you hit on a, a very important point when we talk about education. Uh, how do you finance, you know, that education? You know, I think college debt is a huge issue in our country right now. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, and I think it's very important for people to understand that there are opportunities. There are ways to pay for college through these different state initiatives. Uh, and we want to make sure we provide those resources uh, to our young folks to see that not only can you find a great career, but you can do so in a very inexpensive manner. So thank you for that. And so moving on to the next uh, question, which kind of ties into exactly what you just said. You had mentioned the dual enrollment program and how high schoolers can basically earn credit, college credit, while they're in high school. Uh, 
Melvin, are there any training opportunities uh, for high schoolers and young adults in particular that you want to share with the group? Yes, in regards to what Jason mentioned earlier, dual enrollment is the most um, most uh, used vehicle for those high schoolers to get training. And we have a very good uh, number of dual enrolled students from our local high schools here at Gwinnett Tech uh, that they will get college credit. In addition to obtaining that credit, they will also have an opportunity to be trained in some of these positions, the high demand areas that Jason spoke about earlier, so they can get a firsthand view of what that job is like while they're in high school and charting their way towards a career path with that. And I also want to speak to uh, the AWS Cloud Academy class you talked about. Gwinnett Tech is one of those uh, that was itemized by the governor. It's only two technical colleges at that point was Gwinnett Tech and Columbus Tech. And that's another opportunity for high schoolers to enroll in those classes because that is a demand out there is a demand for that area right now in cybersecurity. Here at Gwinnett Tech, we just broke ground on our new IT cybersecurity building by three weeks ago to the tune of 34.8 million. And as Jason alluded to earlier, in regards to the Colonial Pipeline, the JV Meat Company, everything is being attacked now. And so that demand out there for expertise in that area is much more in demand now. And we're focusing on that. And then another avenue uh, we have here for those dual enrolled students from the high school, we have a launch point center here, which covers once again, our internships and apprenticeships, where we can match that student up with jobs in their specific program they're studying. And they, once again, will get a firsthand view of what that job is like. And they will uh, be uh, uh, shepherded through that process as well. So it's a great opportunity for students who are looking for those career path options option, and the technical college offers a great deal of uh, opportunity opportunities for those students. And I'm a living witness for that. Having visited all 26 at that time, it was 26. I visited all 26 technical colleges within six months. When I was executive director of workforce development and governor deals administration, I visited all technical colleges. And I share this. Um, I was called upon to do a commencement address at the technical college in Thomasville. And before I did the commencement, they invited me into a GED class to speak to the class. Hear me out. I stereotyped the class before I went in the classroom, not by race or ethnicity, anything like that, but by age. I was expecting to see a lot more elderly people in the classroom. When I walked in the classroom, I was shocked. There was about 21 students in there. 70% of them were under the age of 30. And the instructor said, Mr. Everson, I see that inquisitive look on your face. It's, it breaks down like this. A small percentage of them had issues at home that prevented them from graduating high school. But her next statement is what got me. She said, but the vast majority of them, they didn't see it in relevance to the rigor in the classroom. They knew they were not going to Georgia Tech, Morehouse, Georgia, any four year institution but they didn't see any other options. So that's when it hit me. We have to expose these students to other career options and the technical college is a pathway for those options. And once they finish technical college, if they wanna go into a four year institution, that's fine. But we have to make sure they graduate from high school and then go on to the next level of education because if not, they become bored, burn out and drop out and that in itself is another problem we have to address. So it's a great opportunity to dual enrollment here at Launch Point, internships and apprenticeships here at the college for high school students that are dual enrolled at Gwinnett Tech or any technical college. Thank you, Melvin. And, and you make a great point. Uh, a lot of times it's really about options, having options, but recognizing and knowing that the options are there. Um, not too long ago, I believe we we um the technical well we we've had a couple in the technical college system uh, as a whole but several people graduated from high school and college at the same time so yes. we have 17 18 year olds 
you know, leaving high school with a high school diploma and an associate's degree. So that is a great head start on a career, you know, and upward mobility. So the dual enrollment program is certainly uh, something that, that families should consider and, and there's huge advantages to that. Um, and with that being said, I wanted to circle back when we talked about how to get started. So I'm gonna go back uh, to Phil for a second. And what are some particular ways that someone that's trying to figure it all out, you know, how does next gen direct them to get them started? What would be some of the first things they need to do or consider? Well, it's exposure. Melvin hit on the, the magical word, and especially for a young person who has no clue what's out there beyond high school, it's creating opportunities to plug them into workplaces to four year colleges and, and, and institutions. Um, just to, to see firsthand, tangibly, what it's all about, to interact with a diverse makeup of professionals, to see spaces that they one day might want to, uh, to, to work in and occupy the seats that they one day might occupy. And so a lot of our work really is centered on closing those opportunity gaps and building a community of support uh, for our students to have access to these places and environments to know what's out there. Melvin talked about um, before students, high school students drop out, um, you know, it, it's happened spiritually and emotionally years before the actual point at which they, they call it quits. And a lot of it is, is just not knowing what's out there, not being excited about their futures based on their surroundings and just their understanding of how to connect the dots between what they're learning in the classroom and tying it to uh, a career um, that they can, you know, uh, derive some joy and satisfaction from. And so a lot of our work, we partner with local companies and colleges here in Atlanta to open those doors to our young men and women. Um, it's a four year journey. Uh, we have teachers and college mentors at each of our high school sites who are working with our groups of young men and women, uh, taking monthly trips to these different workplaces um, to build that level of excitement and to color in goals and targets beyond high school, but then meeting twice a week after school uh, to build a plan and execute on it, uh, to build those, uh, not just the hard skills, but the soft skills. Uh, I'm glad that work-based learning was touched on. I know Jason talked a lot about the, the technical vocational paths and in, 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 in demand uh, uh, career routes and paths that exist. But our young folks, as we know today, when the world shut down uh, back in March 2020, uh, the folks who were able to easily just leave the workplace and plug back in remotely uh, kept their jobs, kept their benefits, kept that work experience and, and that, that path and momentum going Whereas a lot of folks in uh, more menial or um, it's kind of in-person, kind of physical specific uh, jobs, a lot of those were lost. And so a lot of what we're, we're trying to do is partner students with workplaces to build those transferable skill sets, the ability to communicate, to work collaboratively with others, to problem solve, to identify issues and, and design solutions around those issues or problems. Um, those are the tra transferable skills uh, that will withstand any pandemic, any recession, and allow our students and our young people uh, to navigate uh, uh, these ups and downs more seamlessly. And so it's exposure, it's work-based uh, learning, internship opportunities, and really providing our young people, particularly uh, in my case, the, the, the black and brown youth that I serve and support who just don't have access to these places or human resources to build these skill sets or to build that confidence and agency needed to be successful to do so. Right. Thank you. Um, and you, you make a good point about visibility and access, you know, and, and knowing and seeing. And I think it's all um, upon us to do our best to reach out you know, to these communities uh, to let people know there are options, there are affordable options. Um, and whether it's a three month program or a two year program, there are opportunities 
to grow, to gain your skills. And as Malvin alluded to earlier, you can take that, start working, but also continue to learn, continue your education, you know, build your credentials. So uh, that is a great opportunity. And I want to go back to Jason uh, at TCSG, obviously. TCSG schools are throughout the state, you know, um, are talk a little about about the breadth of programs that are available, you know, because oftentimes a lot of people don't realize, you know, I know as far as us at Gwinnett Tech, people will say, I had no idea that you offered that. So I want you to talk a little bit about what opportunities, you know, program wise there are. Yeah, and, and Phil used a word that we try not to use anymore, which is vocational. I think that for some reason, when we talk about technical careers, people have this idea that it's just going to be like a menial laborer. And that is not what we are training folks to do at all. We are training folks for high paying careers that are true pathways to wealth and success. Um, if you have not seen how much a plumbing company makes in money these days, I mean, it's just unreal how much folks in the technical trades actually make. And those soft skills that Phil mentioned would serve very well in those trades, because if you're going to end up being a business owner in those trades, you need all of those soft skills to be successful. But we have a huge breadth. So we have everything from, from you know, associate degrees in business and criminal justice, so more like your traditional associate degree areas. But we also have all the technical careers, manufacturing, carpentry and construction, um, welding and joining, automotive, but then also the health sciences, so the nursing careers and the x-ray techs and the medical assistants and all of the folks that really were the true heroes in this pandemic and the EMTs, we train all of those careers as well, which are also part of the high demand career initiative. We, we just have such a huge breadth. And I think that's one of the things the technical college system is tries really hard to do, but sometimes people don't get is the incredible value and the level of education that we are able to provide. For example, the, the cybersecurity program we mentioned at Gwinnett Tech and at Augusta Tech are designated as national centers for excellence in cybersecurity by the National Security Agency. Very few schools in the country have that designation. And I think it's just very hard for us sometimes to really put that out there. I think people sort of still look at us maybe as the old technical institutes that we used to be. And we have certainly evolved into agencies that are able to train for world-class careers and, and really be part of that ability for anyone to really truly build wealth. And every one of our colleges has a career services office. And I would really encourage anyone that is exploring an idea of a career to reach out to our colleges and contact the career services office. Those folks are going to be the experts at putting you in contact with all of the resources you need to get started and also helping you figure out the career path that might be best suited for you as far as they'll give you the career styles inventory. They'll, they'll set you up with all of our college success centers and the folks that can support you along that journey. And so those are really great resources. And I think sometimes the people don't know that we have all of that available. And so I just always encourage people to reach out. Great. That's 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 a, a perfect summation of, of what the technical college system offers. And there is one just about in every area. I haven't been to all 22 uh, like Melvin, but I've, I've visited my fair share. And each one has something unique about them that offers different programs. Um, that we may not offer. Um, but also what's really important too is the thing we focus on is getting people jobs, right? Yes, yeah. and I, yeah, there's one thing I always like to mention too is our ed education is technically is guaranteed. So if someone graduates from a technical college and gets a job in the career field that they are trained for, and the employer says, you know what, you, you're, you don't have this skill, you can't do this, you can't do that. That employer can actually ask the technical college system to retrain you. And for two years after you graduate, the technical college system will retrain you for free to bring your skills back up to par where they should be. So I really like to point that out that we really stand behind. And it's a guarantee we often never use because our, our instructors are passionate and dedicated and do an excellent job. But it is a guaranteed education. Right. And that, that's that's a very worthy investment there, you know, when you can follow up and continue to stay current with whatever those skills are. And as we know, um, when it comes to technology, every few months, it changes know, quite often. It certainly does. It's certainly a lifelong sport. You know, it's not something you can rest on your laurels with, you know, that for sure. Um, so when we talk about obviously technical education, building pathways to jobs, an important part of that 
is building the relationships between the colleges or educational institution and the employers. So I'm going to ask Melvin to talk a little bit from his uh, economic development background, how we go about creating those connections and why the technical college systems employment rate is so high. Well, Job thank, placement you. Rate, so, yeah. no, thank you. Thank you for that question. And I uh, will rely upon my 23 year military jargon here. I call it boots on the ground as Dr. Cannon challenges us every day. We constantly are out in the community working with the Chambers of Commerce in North Fulton and Gwinnett County in regards to meeting the businesses and the CEOs to find out what their workforce needs are. We establish that relationship with them and we share with them the resources we have with Gwinnett Tech in order to train and retain their business here in Gwinnett County for their employees. Um, whenever a business looks to possibly locate or relocate to Georgia, they meet with us at the Winnet Chamber and then we make our presentation as far as the resources that are available here. And then they make their decision on whether or not uh, they're going to come to Georgia or Gwinnett County. Uh, working with the Chamber as well as Georgia Department of Economic Development, uh, Commissioner Pat Wilson and his team. Just to give you a good example, during this pandemic, we had a German auto parts manufacturing company come visit us here on campus at Gwinnett Tech. And we made the presentation with Georgia Power, uh, Georgia Department of Economic Development, uh, Partnership Gwinnett, which is the economic development arm of the chamber here in Gwinnett County. And we made that presentation to the CEO of that company and the vice president of human resources who flew in from Washington, not Washington, but Detroit, Michigan. Long story short, uh, they decided to relocate to Lawrenceville, Georgia, to the tune of some uh, 15 or $20 million investment for that uh, company to make car parts for BMW. They set up an operation and a facility in Lawrenceville. And that goes on repeatedly here at Gwinnett Tech with businesses every single day. Just this morning, 7.30, I was here <laughs> with Partnership Gwinnett, they had a roundtable discussion with one, a uh, couple of IT companies talking about the next phase of security for IT companies with all of these cyber attacks. And these are companies that are looking for employees. And we're turning them out here at Gwinnett Tech with our IT program here. And uh, that's another opportunity for us to augment their employment role as far as hiring some Gwinnett Technical College graduates. Just to give you a good example, we had graduation last Wednesday. A young lady who graduated from our, our uh, computer program here, she was so excited, two-year program, she started her job this past Monday, started out, a two-year program, started out $50,000 a year. She was excited. I said, wow, $50,000 a year, starting out with, with, with the IT uh, computer program degree from Gwinnett Tech. So this is how we stay in touch with the businesses. Also, we have advisory board members from local businesses here. They are able to give us feedback on what we need to offer in our curriculum. That's how the technical college can flip on a dime as far as the courses we offer. They are more uh, up to date than a four year institution. They can't flip like that, but we can flip because the businesses are sitting at the table they're telling us what their workforce needs are. And we build our curriculum around that. So the product that we turn out is what they need when they look to employ someone. So that's how we are able to stay in touch with the business community. We establish that relationship and uh, we continue to uh, build on that relationship. And the word of mouth is, uh, it's, it's monumental when it goes to uh, speaking about what we can provide. And I can't say enough about the technical college. I could go on and on and on. I, 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 I yeah. really, because that, I, that that light went off. I'm t I'm telling you, I, when when that absolutely. light bulb goes off and people see, wow, you mean yes, it's the way. 
And I think that's one thing that makes us truly unique as a system, too, is that every program in the state has an advisory board of local business members that advise that program. And we do not offer a program if it is not somehow tied to employment. So you will not see any associative arts in psychology or sociology majors hardly in the technical college system because we don't have employment tied to that area, right? We want to make sure that when you graduate with this credential that you are employable and there's a high paying job attached to it. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to applaud Phil for what he does with next gen generation there because I have I was invited down to speak to the group of young people that he's working with there. And it's just amazing the mindset and ingenuity these young people have and reaching out and just sharing. So thank you, Phil, for what you do. And I look forward to coming to the next one too, because it was amazing. Some very bright minds there and just another opportunity to introduce them and expose them to options out there. And that's what it's going to take to turn this thing around in those communities. And I appreciate your efforts on that. Very true. Absolutely. And obviously working at the technical college system of Georgia uh, school like with that tech, I love to tout, you know, us as well. Um, but I also know that if you're in the state of Georgia, there is no shortage of quality institutions of higher education, you know, um, throughout the state. So you really have to find where you fit in. Uh, and what we find at our college is um, we have about 40% of our students that already have one to three years. So they've gone somewhere and then they decided to finish with us. So it's very important to find the right path as soon as possible, you know, and for everyone, it may not be directly to a four year institution, you know, so keep your options open, find out as much information as you can to see what works for you. And, and that's really what this comes down to. Um, so. Before we go, any last parting words, Jason? No, I just really appreciate the opportunity to explain the programs and the breadth that we have and just the opportunities for folks to really connect with careers that are both interesting and fulfilling and high paying. I think there's a lot, especially in the in the trade and industry areas where people kind of make assumptions about what the career might be. Come talk to us. Let, let us show you what we've got. And I think we can open your eyes a little bit. Right. I agree. Uh, Melvin, any last words? Yeah, I just want to thank the Latin American Association for this opportunity to speak to the audience in regards to workforce development and what we do do here at Gwinnett Tech and TCSG across the state of Georgia. Uh, the college system, TCSG, is uh, separated by service areas covering different counties and what have you. But these are opportunities, and we are here for you. If you ever want additional information or come to our campus, just reach out to me, and we'll be more than happy to accommodate. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Absolutely. And to some things, sum everything up, uh, we've learned about some different pathways and resources that are important uh, that we need to expose our students and young adults to, because there are options they may not know about. Uh, particularly if they're in the minority communities, they may not have that bridge, you know, so it's important for us to make sure that we are creating that bridge for them to know that there are opportunities here. Over 50% of our students here are minorities, so it's very important for us Extremely important. to be a service, you know, to them. Um, we also learned about the different programs. We have something for everyone. So don't think that, oh, because it's a technical college, they probably don't have what I want to learn. As, as uh, Jason mentioned, reach out, visit tcsg.edu. You will be surprised at the, you know, uh, wide range of opportunities there are from healthcare to horticulture, to aviation. I mean, it's, it's across the board, you know, so um, take every opportunity, do your research, reach out. Um, we in our service area, if you're in Gwinnett County or North Fulton County, reach out GwinnettTech.edu. We'd be happy to help you, you know, and, and that's really why we're here is to provide opportunities. You know, this is really about you all. This is about the community, empowering the community, filling the workforce gap and doing our best we can to provide quality uh, workers moving forward. So with that being said, uh, I want to thank you all for joining us. I'm going to thank the Latin American Association for having such a great event uh, with everyone here. And oh, 
Phil's back. Before I end, do you have any parting words that you want to share with anyone about uh, Next Gen or what they can do as far as building a career? Yeah, I apologize. It looks like my wife and I were fighting for, for bandwidth over here. We we're talking about <laughs> this new age of, of working, but right. um, I just want to thank the Latin American Association for, for bringing myself, Jason, Melvin, and, and, and you, Chuck, for moderating this conversation. Um, it's important. It's important that we're thinking about where we are today, given the challenges that uh, COVID and the pandemic has brought about, but just the, the the myriad opportunities out there. Jason spoke to them, Melvin spoke to them, I spoke to them. Um, access is important, exposure is important, and just reaching out. Uh, there are a ton of opportunities out there. It's just a matter of creating ways for young people to see uh, things in real life, to explore these different avenues and pathways, and to to really transition and and, and, and turn that excitement into careers. And so uh, NextGen, um, our, our website is, is nextgenatl.org. Uh, there's more information on our work. So please check us out if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to reach out to me specifically at phil at nextgenatl.org. And again, just appreciate the conversation. Thank you so much. Um, and I've put the websites in the comments in the chat. So if anyone is interested, um, they can visit uh, Next Gen, visit TCSG, or visit us at Gwinnett Tech. Uh, so again, we thank you all for joining us. We hope this was beneficial. We hope it gives you um, some inspiration to let you know there are a lot of opportunities out there for you, that there are people out here uh, rooting for you, there are people out here working for you. And please don't hesitate to call any of us um, to reach out to our institutions. So again, thank you, Latin American Association. And with that, you all enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you.